what can Trey Lance do himself this offseason to be the indefinite starter, to take this job? Nothing. <laughs> there's nothing. Not, there's, there's nothing. nothing he can do. There's nothing, There's nothing he can do. The only thing he can do is uh, live up to a standard and just play well. That's number one. And he's going to have to, you know, and then once he does that, okay, cool. You're the starter, obviously, by default. But you also got to play well and not look bad because otherwise they're going to have it in for you as soon as Brock is ready to go by week one, two, or three, whatever. Right. Um, and then once that, it's pretty much everything for him is just what can you do in a real game? Not a preseason, not a joint practice. Not a random exhibition game, whatever the hell is going to be there. You have to show what you can do in a real game. Week one, two, three, four, that's how many games you're going to get. And you're going to have to play well. You can't play bad, number one, and you can't play bad and lose, number two. That's that's worse. <laughs> that's not going to work out. Then we're going to have a Jimmy Garoppolo 2021 situation where you're going to get replaced, but except you're going to get replaced earlier, especially if like there's already been a couple weeks or so that Purdy's there. And then sure enough, you already know, the Cabo click or whatever the hell you want to call them is suddenly going to be like, I think we can win Purdy. It's going to be, it's going to be the Jimmy psych all over again with all these little, little immature, little gossip, you know, Beverly Hills news, whatever the hell, you know, thing, everything. So it's really, there's nothing in the off season. You know, I get it. It's like, get back to health, show you can play well, be fine. Don't make too many mistakes. Cause ultimately you're just going to get judged on what you can do on the actual Sundays on Sundays, Thursdays, Mondays. And from there on out, you're gonna. It's gonna be on you, Trey, to hold on because you are on a very, very thin ice and what you can afford. You know, I, I, I see. I could see it as bad as being just one bad game. It's depending on how bad the degree. Say, if, say he goes like 13 of 29. You know, 170 yards, two picks. I think that's gonna be enough for him to get pulled, like in a week three, week four game where they go to Purdy. So to him, everything's just gonna be done on a real game. It just feels to me like this team wants Purdy to be their quarterback, and so with yeah. Trey, all of his, it, it, yeah. and it's always been this way with Trey since he's gotten here. All of his um, imperfections are magnified. So he'll he'll complete a pass and people be like, oh, but it wobbled. Look, at it, it, there wasn't a perfect spiral. Like, he's been dealing with that for two years. Where, <laughs> whereas with, with Brock, like, Brock's a great story, you know. I, I, all, of his, all of his good things are magnified. So I feel like with, with Trey, I don't know if he can ever win here. I don't know if he can ever play well enough. I don't know if he can ever win convincingly enough. I feel... And all, there's also the fact that the Niners' offense str struggles every year to start the season, and he's going to be starting the season. So, yeah, they could blame him again for their collective uh, problems. It's going to be another influx of new coaches on the offense and everything. Good point. How's the defense going to click with Steve Wilkes slow off the bat? Going. Defense going to be is the defense going to be a slow starter now? Um, but the it, pass game coordinator is gone, right? And they got a new guy in. So you're right. Maybe the pass game isn't going to be so great early on like last. That's a good point. You have two, maybe three new starters on the offensive line. Um, yep. Yeah, it's, it's 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 asking for another typical slow Kyle Shanahan 49ers start again, especially on um, offense. But especially I think offense. I think to at least give the credit of why like Trey Lance versus Purdy, like why Purdy isn't anywhere near mid pick as Lance is. You know, one was the last pick in the draft. The other one was the second third pick in the draft. <laughs> so right. that the, right. this has become a bit more of a magnifying glass on that player. And, you know, every so it's like, it's like, oh, they got him the seven. So it's easy. You know, the same way like Jimmy Garoppolo got nitpicked is because he was getting paid twenty seven, twenty eight million dollars a year. If he was getting paid like he should have this year, the seven to ten, then I think at least me and some others would have pulled back the criticisms because he's not being demanded to pay as to play as well because he's not siphoning as much of the salary cap. Like you said, he's not taking up 12, 13 percent of that cap, because if he is OK, we need you to play well, efficient and pretty great football at times but no you can't do that since you since you have less of that money less of that expectation less of that draft capital weight because remember he wasn't just a second third pick trey lance they spent three on him this year and next year's <laughs> so i mean i mean uh 2021 and yeah i think this is last year right because that 2024 yeah. they're back the first year yeah so they yeah. spent three on him so that's why it kind of gets a little more high sense and then it's, it's the fact that he's coming, you know, to take the spot of a guy who gave the 49ers actual hope when really it was just not hope. He's the one that just kept them afloat because he just needed them to get in Garoppolo. So I think that's pretty much where it is. At. It's because one guy was the last pick. The other guy was pretty much almost the first pick. Yeah, but that's not valid because, look, the thing with Jimmy is that, yeah, he was getting critiqued because of his, because of his salary, but he was also getting critiqued because he's 31. He started 57 games and he never improved. And I think – some people were like, man, this guy's gotten a million second chances enough with this guy. He's not good enough. With Trey, 
Yeah, he was the third pick in the draft, and the Niners gave up a haul to get him. He started four games. Brock has started eight. So, yeah, one was the last pick. One was a huge investment, but they're both essentially rookies, and I don't think it's fair to be hypercritical on one because of where he was drafted, and the other guy be like, oh, what a great story he is. Oh, look at it. It's like they, they should probably – no, I'm not saying you, but they should probably be judged on the same – scale now that they're, all, they're both NFL players in the same team. But they won't be. They won't be, to your point. They absolutely won't be. Eh, but getting eh, – I'm going to push back on that. Getting drafted, to, to, uh, what round you are, does matter. It does matter significantly a lot. I mean, I'm not going to say that Trey deserves a criticism because he hasn't he hasn't had a chance to do anything. That's that's where I get, that's where I get the pushback. It's like, look, I get, a, I get a, the versus like, okay, this guy was the last pick versus this guy, but it's like, what can we really criticize too much on Trey? He hasn't really gotten a chance. Like I don't get, I don't get so much of the, I can't really be pot too positive or too negative on him. Cause it's like, can we just wait to get more games on this guy? At least Purdy, he had like nine games on his belt and that's right. like, okay, there's something to work with. But even still, but even still, but all still I'm more saying cool. is all I'm saying is based on like this whole perception of where they were drafted, they could do the same thing. And for Trey, it wouldn't be good enough, but for Brock, it would be inspirational because he was the last pick in the draft, but it was the same exact play. That's what I'm saying here. But then there's also like, and I've seen this about talking about like, if, if, you know, everyone does the whole, Oh, what, what, what would you do in a redraft? And it's like, well, yeah, hindsight. But anyways, and what would you do to redraft? People can, you can see him Brock Purdy be almost like a third round pick now. Whereas like if Trey were to do what Brock did, it's like, well, he's supposed to do that. He's authority top thick. He needs to be this good, if not better. So it's like, you know, That's you true. do, you do that thing. It's like, it's like, it's like what I wrote with my bargain contracts. It's like the 49ers are getting more bang for their buck in terms of not only just how much they're paying for him, which is not getting paid a million, but what they, what, what it came to cost them. It was just pretty much like a flyer. They probably just looked at the, look at the board and say, ah, quarterback screw it. Let's go there. The Niners could have probably didn't even, I mean, they did, but it's like, they could have just been like, just pick anyone. It doesn't matter. It's the last pick in the draft. It doesn't matter. So let's just figure it out. Yeah. But again, what I'm saying is when you're the last pick in the draft and you do like you've already exceeded expectations, people yeah. aren't going to nitpick your game. I mean, your arm isn't that strong. You're not that big. Who cares? You're already better than anything, any, any last pick ever. But Trey, dude, you got to be to, to, to I mean, you got to be Patrick Mahomes. And so he could be better than Brock Purdy, but people might prefer Brock Purdy because Trey Lance is not living up to some theoretical expectation, whereas Brock Purdy's already ex exceeded his. It's he's a better story. That's all I'm saying. I think next year when Purdy gets the if he gets the start again and starts on where I think that he's gonna get more he's gonna get more critiqued on now versus last year it was just kind of like all right dude you kind of allotted yourself plenty of excuses yeah. you got thrown into the fire and the late playoff run um, hard to knock anything you're doing man you haven't lost a game point, you're not which, yeah. you know I mean especially it was hard when he was elevating the offense over Garoppolo he was so yeah. now I think next year is gonna be more of a of a he, magnifying glass on him just like you mentioned. Trey what they like a redraft and what they'd be worth. Oh, it's interesting. What would Trey be worth in a trade right now? What would Brock be worth in a trade right now? Um, I think Brock's worth more. I don't know about that. I think he was worth more until he got his UCL snap. Actually. Yeah. I don't know. Injury, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Bit. It's different. I, I, I think before <laughs> his UCL got his UCL got snapped, his, his trade value was getting pushed into the first round cat. I mean, wow. He was killing it. But now you're like, Oh, what's he going to be when he comes back? He still has an arm issue. I don't know. And Trey, I mean, same thing, right? People liked him as a dual threat, but now he's coming off his second ankle surgery. Like, what's his trade value right now? I don't I think know. they're both day three picks at this point because of their injuries. Ooh. Maybe. Maybe.